introduction to what I'll be talking about this morning. Um, so my name is Nick Kumo. I know some of you already who are, who are watching this due to um, prior experiences. Um, I have a history in media buying agencies. I've worked across um, Starcom, IMD, CARA, amongst a few others, um, in senior levels, reporting into MDs and GMs, etc. So that's where I spent most of my career. <clears throat> More recently, though, I've been on the client side. I've um, worked at um, Suncorp. Um, for several years, where um, I managed Shannon's and um, CIL, which is Caravan Insurance and AP of the brand, um, for about four or five years. And since then, I <clears throat> worked across a few um, startups in the media world. And uh, now I'm at Car Sales as a trade marketing manager, where my main role is to um, support the brand when selling to trade and marketing the brand, making sure positions are right and the sales teams are, are doing the right things and also selling the brand um, on brand and using all the right collateral, et cetera. So that's what I do now, <clears throat> enjoying working for a mid-sized firm. So um, enjoying that in the digital space. And now when Daryl asked me to speak to you guys today regarding exclusive audience, I thought, where do I start with this? And the obvious place to start is in the, in, in the brief. Um, obviously each client such as yourselves and others have, all, have got a, a business plan and outside of that letters into a marketing plan. Um, and with part of a marketing plan, you have a, have a, um, a target audience that has been defined as um, a group of people who are more likely to buy your product in simple terms. Um, now that audience um, is obviously really important to your uh, target, into your um, marketing brief. It then gets translated into a media brief of some sort, generally speaking. And that media brief then goes to other, directly to a, to a channel or a group of channels and stations and such forth. All goes to a media agency if you have that arrangement. And from there, the media people um, start doing um, a whole lot of analysis around your audience and what they and how they interact with uh, the media channels. Um, there's a whole lot of analysis done in that, particularly from an agency point of view. It depends on budgets, your marketing objectives, um, and, and what you're trying to achieve. Then we, we go into a whole lot of analysis around audience. Um, using your audience, say, for example, people 25, 54, which is obviously a very popular and wide demographic that is used in a lot of media briefs across a lot of different categories. Um, they, we do a whole lot of audience analysis uh, as, part of, um, as part of the end, end schedule. Um, we also look at um, the content, the channel, um, the actual, um, and how that mat match with the target audience. Um, we look at affiliation and, and aligning with different audiences and customers. So is the, is the, is the um, channel um, a trusting channel? Um, what's the on-air content like? Does it actually uh, marry up with our audience and their feelings and, and their psychographics, not just their demographics? Is it safe? Um, is the brand happy to play in this space? Um, so when you look at those things, there's a lot of brands that avoid certain things, you know, gambling, for example, is a big one. Um, especially in the digital area where there's less control and it's not as safe as that in some cases. So it's really important that depending on the brand and where they want to sit in their branding, that they're in the right environment where their audience is. Then we do a whole lot of selection around that. So um, we look at the audience analysis, how many people have reached, what, what are they doing, how do they feel? Um, and then obviously outside of that falls a duplicated audience or non-exclusive audience and an exclusive audience. Now, the exclusive audience piece is really important because it falls outside of what is generally a reach analysis. A reach analysis, particularly in the world of the bigger channels, um, is all about mass reach, and therefore outside of that falls a frequency piece because when, if you're going to use a big channel and, and target a large audience, at some point on, say, TV, for example, you've got to reach a law of diminishing returns where the more money you spend, the less reach you're getting because you've maxed out the reach. That makes sense. Therefore, the only thing that's going to be building is the frequency or the average frequency. Now, if you keep building that frequency, there's a point where you're starting to um, waste your money. Um, at, most people use a three plus or three to five plus average frequency. But if you're starting to reach a user channel reaching a lot higher than that, you know, you've got to look at alternatives. So, i.e. other channels, for example, but when you're looking at ex exclusive audience, where, uh, as defined earlier by Jim, is you can only reach these people on this particular channel, um, that's a different thing entirely because these people aren't included in 
uh, the major reach analysis. Um, so they're falling outside of that. So if you have a mandate, for example, the big government where you need to reach um, all people in Victoria or in Australia or in a particular state, depending where you're operating, and you've got an audience or all people or 25, 54, whatever it is, you need to look at these channels where there's an exclusive audience so you can reach those people because you can't reach them anywhere else. Now, those people are really important. Those people are, they assuming they're full in your audiences per your brief and your business objectives. These people are really engaged because they're obviously consuming a media for a particular reason. It may be um, it's the music, maybe it's whatever the content is that they're particularly interested in, so they engage with that audience. Um, so that audience is engaging with that channel, uh, therefore they'll be more likely to engage with any messaging that is a part of that channel because there's a, um, there's a trust framework that's already been identified as part of the earlier selection of, of channel process. So there's, there's obviously um, engagement, there's a trust. Now, if you, if you pull that out even further, therefore there's a willingness to be involved with the brand, buy from the brand, um, visit the website and, and, and get involved with the brand as they see fit. So there's that alignment between the channel and the client and therefore the customer most importantly that brings everything together to bring to, uh, to, to equal a successful um, marketing strategy, marketing plan, media plan, and media execution. Obviously, the creative is another point that needs to be considered, which is a bit outside of this discussion, but obviously your creative also needs to be in line with that because that's the other piece. So from a, a, a small business point of view or medium business where, where budgets are, are not big, um, it's important to look at exclusive audience because you get that in increased engagement, you'll find efficiencies in your buy, i.e. your buy will perform better at the end At the end, when it comes to your sales or awareness or whatever metrics you are trying to achieve at the end of the campaign. So it's really important to keep that in mind. Now, obviously with government, as I mentioned, another really important area where they have to reach everyone. Therefore, if, 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 if a certain channel is only reaching a certain amount of people just exclusively, they need to be included in that buy to ensure that most of whatever the audience is, is reached. Now, finally, I'd like to say that the really important part you've got to remember of exclusive audience, because people are highly engaged and want your brand and, and everything's aligned when it comes to content, et cetera, the performance of your schedule will improve because these people are more engaged in the environment and therefore in what you're trying in, in your message on what you're trying to sell, what you're, whatever you're trying to um, get, get across to the audience, be it you know moving a store or um, awareness of your brand. So it's really important to, to, to remember that. That's my um, presentation. Um, I was, well, uh, yeah, Jim, over to you if there's anything else you would like to add. Yeah, thanks very much, Nick. Um, just while anybody else wants to gather their thoughts, if they've got any questions for you, uh, one of the things that really springs to mind for me then is uh, the idea around um, the messaging uh, itself. Uh, if you do have a, a message that for argument's sake you're pushing out onto mass media, um, how important would it be to at least consider tweaking that message to make sure that it engages with the audience in, in a particular way? I think any way that you can make sure that your message is more relevant to the audience, um, exclusive audience in particular, the better the message will be received and therefore performance will be better at the end of the day. Um, you know, if you're looking at, a, a, you know, radio campaigns, for example, the investment to make slight changes to, to a radio commercial to target your audience is not that great. And therefore, um, you'll see the benefits later on. But I think it goes back to basic marketing. You, you have an audience, they want something, you're in the right place for that, you're reaching them, therefore your message has to be spot on. You get all the pieces right, you'll have a better campaign. 